One more time. Let's do a Tesla phone. Just choosing some things. This is not completed. We'll say it's not completed yet and we'll submit. All right, so now we have three written options in Excel. Hey everyone, this is My SharePoint Questions and I am Andrew Hess. So today I'm going to create a Power App based on a question that I got in YouTube. So let's go to that question. Um, it's from Manjanath Nadu. Hopefully I said that right. Um, if not, let me know I said it wrong, you know. But um, he wanted a, a Power App based on Excel backend with uh, five different filters. So yeah, he, he has a colleague, um, uh, you know, I would never recommend Excel as the backend, but I'm not gonna tell you how to create your own Power App. Some people prefer Excel as the backend. Uh, they have a lot more knowledge there. Um, they can train people easier using Excel. And so let's go ahead and create a Power App with a backend of Excel and five filters, including a date. All right, so for me, I'm going to store this Excel document in SharePoint. So I'm in a SharePoint site called Sandbox. It is connected to a team. You can store your Excel document where you'd like. So I'm gonna put it in the general folder here. I'm gonna do new, and that way it's like connected to my team. We're going to create a new Excel table here. So we'll have title, type, uh, color, completed, due date, and one more, um, we'll just say group by, so that way we have enough columns. So I'm just gonna highlight the columns here and do insert, table, and we'll say my table has headers. All right, so we have a nice Excel table here. I'm gonna give my table a name, so in table design, we'll call this product. And then I'm going to rename my Excel workbook, so product list. All right, so I have a very simple Excel table here. I'm going to close down. I'm going to refresh the SharePoint list just to make sure it updates. All right, so it has updated. We can see I have an Excel document uh, called product list. So let's go to Power Apps. All right, so in Power Apps, we're going to add data, and I'm going to do Excel here. It connects to OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Sites, Office 365 Groups. So once we select this and we choose our credentials, it's gonna bring up a, a large list of all your groups and your SharePoint Sites. Well, my SharePoint site was called Sandbox, right? So I'm just gonna search for that, so Sandbox. And I'm gonna choose the document library here. So Documents, and in the general folder, I saved a Excel document called product list. And the table was called product. So we named our table product and I'm gonna connect. And normally what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert an auto generated ID. I, I just like doing that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have connected to my product Excel online and we're just gonna create a simple uh, edit form. So we'll do an edit form. And I'm gonna connect over here. You can click here in, on the purple text or on the right side, we can do product. So I'm gonna connect to that. And on the right side, I'm gonna go ahead and edit fields and then add the fields I would like. So depending on the order you pick them is the order that it's gonna start off on. This is just another little trick is, so if I click title first, then type, color, uh, group by completed due date, it's gonna come in in that order that I selected them on. So now I have some fields here. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert some of these to drop downs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go quick through this because I just wanna knock this out. I've done this a lot of times. We're gonna unlock it, delete, input, drop down, type. In my drop downs here, I can put in uh, let's say um, product, uh, we can do Google, Microsoft. I know that's maybe 
or um, let's say Amazon. And let's do Tesla. We'll do phones, so Tesla. All right, so we have different options in there. And I'm going to fix the red X's. Now you can come in here and change these to drop down one. And we're changing it to drop down one because that's the name uh, that we have for our drop down. So drop down one here. And so we're going to do the same thing. Uh, for update, we're going to say drop down one dot selected dot value. So whatever we select in here is what we're going to write. Now another thing that you want to do on a drop down is you want to come normally. You don't have to do this, but normally what you do is you come to the advanced uh, settings here. Let me move my face. There we go. So in the advanced settings, there is an allow empty selection. We're going to change that to true. And that way, we can actually have a blank selection here. So let's go to, let's bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to add a button. And this is just, you know, to make things simple for myself. We're going to change this button. And it's going to be new. And in the on select at the top, I'm just going to say new form, form 2. So that's the name of my form. It's called form 2. I would recommend just renaming it so form product. So when you rename it, it is going to fix your your formula up here. So now we have new form, form product. And so when I press play and I do new, we can see my drop down has a blank selection. So we can have blank or we can choose one of our drop downs. Now I might want to pull this down to kind of make it match. But now we have a drop down with um, some options. So I'm going to do that also. Now, a lot of people love to use lookups. And I just want to touch in on this. So let's do an Excel lookup table. And I'm going to go back into my Excel list here. And I'm going to create a new sheet. And this sheet is going to have our colors. Red, blue, green, yellow, magenta, black, white, gray. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to create a table here. I'm going to do insert table. My table has a header. I'm going to rename my table to colors. Okay, so we now have added another table in our Excel. Um, I did put it on a separate tab, so we still have this. You can see my auto-generated Power Apps ID. We also have another table with our colors in it. So I'm going to go back to Power Apps. And I'm going to add the connection to that new table. So add Excel. We pick Sandbox. Go to Documents, General, Product List. It's going to ask me what table. I'm going to choose Colors. And um, we'll let it uh, auto-generate another ID. So now I've made that connection to that table. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, for my color, I'm going to delete this text box. I'm going to insert another drop down, so input drop down. But for this drop down, instead of manually typing it in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say colors dot colors. And that's only because that's the name of my column here. So colors is the name of my table. Maybe I should have changed the name of that, but also the name of my column here. So now when I press play, and let's uh, fix this up to drop down to okay and now the update will be drop down to dot selected dot value dot selected dot colors actually when we press play we have those colors in here already look at that isn't that neat so Maybe you do want to do a refresh if someone were to update your lookup, but this is doing a lookup in Excel. Okay, so we've populated this now with our colors from our lookup list in Excel. All right, so we'll just say um, next we'll do group by. I'm going to change this one to another drop down, and this group by will be. Um, 
we'll just make this simple product a product B okay so we got a, a couple options in there and now for completed um, we could make this a checkbox let's just say we make it a checkbox input a checkbox we can just say yes um, there's other options we could do here. We could delete this actually and just say completed. And so it's a checkbox there. Um, now we're going to say checkbox one dot height and fix the update property also. So checkbox one dot value. And it doesn't like um, that also. So we'll just fix each one of those. Okay, we have fixed all of our red X's. Now due date, we want this to be a date. Advanced, unlock, delete, input, date picker. Update our red X's. This is gonna be date picker one. Date picker one and date picker dot selected date. All right, so now we have a new button. Let's add a submit button. So I'm just going to copy paste and in the properties we'll do submit. I'm sorry I'm going fast, but we got to make my videos short. We can't have all these long videos where people get bored. Submit form. Okay, so now we have our title. This is our Google phone. Type is Google. The color is white. Product A completed. Due date. September 8th, 2021. We will submit. All right, we've now submitted to our Excel sheet. Let's check out our Excel sheet. We can see that we have now written one time to our Excel sheet. Let's keep going. Let's do another new Microsoft phone. Type is Microsoft. We'll say it's red. Completed. We'll choose a different date and submit. All right, so we wrote again. One more time. Let's do a Tesla phone. Just choosing some things. This is not completed. We'll say it's not completed yet and we'll submit. All right, so now we have three written options in Excel, right? All right, so we have our form working. Let's get a gallery up and running. So I'm gonna go up here to new screen. I'm gonna do a blank. Gallery vertical. I'm gonna choose my product uh, data source here. And I'm going to delete the picture. Don't care about the picture. Okay, and now for these text fields, I'm going to say text. This is title. And this is type. All right, and now I'm going to make this uh, look better. So I'm going to pull this over. Pull this up. I'm just going to copy paste and this will be color copy paste and what's the next one uh, completed due date and group by so this is completed oh copy this paste due date all right and one more this is group by. All right, so all I did was copy paste that on down, delete the arrow, and then I'm gonna pull this in. So now we have a nice looking table. Now we can come in here and um, put some table headers in. So I'll just, the way to do that is just to do a label and pull your table headers in. So this is title. And I'll probably just fast forward through this, but I'll, I'll put it in there. All right, so 
I just formatted the table so it looks a little better, centered things, added some color. So I'm going to create a drop down. So input drop down. And for this one, we're going to do it on type, right? So this will be our products. Products dot type. Okay, so we can see now in the drop down we have three different options. Now for the first option we want to filter our product table so we're going to filter when product no 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 when type is equal to drop down four dot selected dot type okay so we do have a filter there now we can rename the drop down so this one will rename it to drop uh, type so it, it did update the formula there so now when we click on it it should update and change the gallery all right so I, I did hit the 15 minute mark um, if you want me to continue uh, you're gonna have to stay tuned until next week we'll get into more of I think we need to work on the UI I kind of worked on this and I don't like the way that you filter on it and so I'm going to show you how to work on some of the UI for filtering your gallery and we'll do a search and a, some more filters and we're going to run into some delegation issues and I'll, I'll show you how to dodge those also. So please stay tuned. Next week we're going to go into filtering this gallery and this form and writing it back into an Excel. I'll even go into this Excel document uh, that I've been working on. I feel like we we don't have to do all of our work in Power Apps. Just because we have a tool doesn't mean that we should be using the tool. There's some really cool things that we can do right here in Excel, right? We can create filters, you know, um, and create these neat slicers and we can make some charts on the side. So there's a lot more we can do. Uh, let's do that next weekend. So stay tuned. Uh, next weekend, I'm going to go more into this using Excel as a backend. If you're interested, please like and subscribe. We'll get into this more using Excel as a backend next weekend. So this is my SharePoint questions. I'm Andrew Hess. I'll see you next week.